Hey friends, today I want to talk about how to make yourself a really cool intro using Final Cut Pro. I have recently done exactly that and man I've had a lot of comments from you guys. Um, so yeah, apparently you want to know how I did it, so that's what we're going to do today. Um, and here's the intro. Uh, yeah, so I made that intro um, about two or three months ago now, and I put it at the start of all of my videos. And yeah, one of the most common questions I've had is people asking me how I made it in Final Cut um, and sort of why I chose to make the intro in Final Cut. So let's cover that first. Um, a lot of people will tell you, and if you watch YouTube videos, you will see people recommending that you can buy these templates for Adobe After Effects, and they're really cool, and you can very quickly and very easily make yourself a cool intro sequence, and that's great. Uh, for me personally, I get by in After Effects, you know? Um, it's not my preferred piece of software. I've used it numerous times and I can use it. Whenever I've tried to use it for one of my own intros, I've found one of two things, okay? i found that either the template that I've purchased isn't quite what I want, and in order to edit it into what I want, it becomes very difficult and very custom, or, or isn't possible. Or secondly, my own After Effects knowledge isn't quite good enough to make the template into the thing that I want it to be. So I did try and make a couple of intros. I bought a couple of templates from After Effects. Neither of them were quite what I wanted uh, it to be. So Final Cut is my main editing tool. It's the main piece of software that I choose to use. I've become quite familiar with it. And I just started to think, well, maybe I should just make an intro using Final Cut and just see how far I can go with it. And actually, um, I found the process pretty easy. Actually, I had a pretty good idea of what I wanted. I wanted to show the few clips of me working. I decided I was going to sort of block color it in a sort of duotone fashion, um, which I've done a previous video on. Uh, I'll link that uh, up here. And... Um, and yeah, just the, all of the different sort of assets that you can get within Final Cut and the sort of things I've, assets that I've collected over the time I've been editing, um, I was able to sort of stitch them all together and very quickly kind of come up with the sort of thing that I wanted. Um, and yeah, as I said, loads of people have asked uh, about it. So that's what I'm going to show you. I'm going to try and keep this quick because it's really hot in here. It's boiling outside. I've had to shut the curtains. I'm sweating. So I'll try and keep it quick. <laughs> But there is quite a lot of ground to cover, so watch at your own peril. Um, anyway, let's dive into my screen. And uh, I'm straight in Final Cut at the moment. And uh, what I'll do is I will show you... This is... Uh, let's just zoom this up a bit. So this is, uh, this is what the project looks like. This is the finished intro. Okay, so there's, you know, there's a few different things going on here um, and what I've already done let's shrink this down uh, what I've already done is I've just created um, a completely blank uh, project here which we're going to work in I'm working uh, my timeline that I'm working on is uh, 24 frames per second uh, 1920 by 1080p so a standard HD timeline um, and I've already this is the actual uh, library file that I use to make my intro so I've already sort of thrown in here any of the clips that I thought might have been useful I've got my sort of logo um, and the bits and pieces and I've got like the song that I chose to use for my intro uh, so hopefully that'll help speed things up a little bit um, so uh, what we're going to do is the first thing we're going to do, um, I don't know whether you notice when I play my intro I bring the sound, the introduction to the song in behind me talking normally which is a nice thing I like to do. So what we need to do is we need to make our intro a little bit longer than it actually needs to be uh, so that that 
audio can come in and then we can layer the video over the top when we use it. Uh, if that doesn't make sense, I will explain once I've got something to explain. Uh, so uh, what we're going to do in our blank timeline is we're going to come up to our solids and I'm just going to drop a vivid, it doesn't need to be vivid, it could be any of these, no one's ever going to see it, but for some reason I went for a vivid, so that's what we're going to do. And then, uh, then I'm going to drop my song, uh, let's put some sound on now. So this is the intro to the track. And I only really want that first bit. That'll do. Right, so I'm going to drag that song underneath here. And that's not quite long enough. And that is where my intro is going to stop. And you'll probably recognise that anyway because I just played it to you. Also, let's turn that looping off, because that's annoying. So all I'm doing now is that's the bit of... I'm trying to just get that end how I want it. There we go. So now we've got our track in. Uh, I did another video not so long ago about how to cut things to the beat and in there I show you a technique for using markers. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, watch this video up here now and um, come back. But I'm going to use beat markers just to mark where I might want some cuts to be. All right. So what I've got is I've got the audio selected here and I'm going to use the M key as I listen to it to mark where the beats are. Okay, you'll get the idea, here we go. All right, so you see now I've just got these blue marks. These are just visual aids to help me with the edit so I know where I'm going to cut things. So this blue bit, all this blue bit's for is so that we've got something on the timeline and you're never going to see that. So we're just going to start editing our intro but by having this sort of tail at the front it allows us to leave this intro on there. See what I mean now? So what we now need to do is we now need to get our footage in place. And as I've said to you uh, previously, all I used for my intro was just my favorite bits and pieces, but this might be whatever intro you're making. You may have a completely different idea. So obviously the footage is not the important thing here. And what I'm gonna do just to speed things up a little bit here is I have got just the bits of footage I used here. So all I've done is selected the bits that I like and put them straight in the timeline. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy them, go back into our new project that we're working on, I'm going to stick this here, I'm going to paste that in. So what we now have is So at this point, you're probably thinking, this is not impressive, Will, what are you talking about? I know how to put some clips and attach them to music. But this is where, um, hopefully, it gets a bit more interesting. I hope it gets interesting. Uh, so let's just mute this again, because it's annoying. Uh, if I jump over to my browser, there's a few things, right, which I think uh, make these After Effects templates come to life. Okay, uh, there's sound effects, um, it's the transitions that are used, and it's the quirky effects that are used. But actually, you don't need to use After Effects to do some of these cool effects. Um, there's lots of cool things that you can do in Final Cut. Some of them are 
built into the program and others are available quite cheaply as kind of aftermarket resources. So I'm just going to talk you through a couple of websites which um, I've used a lot for a range of different projects and I'm going to show you the few bits and pieces which I actually, I mean a couple of them I bought specifically for my intro but most of them I, I kind of just had them anyway. Um, so uh, the first website um, is great and it's called freesound, freesound.org and um, this website is amazing, right? You can create a free account and uh, you can search anything and it is completely um, user driven. So it's user uploaded content. People can upload sound effects for free for people to download for free. And you can also download as many sound effects as you like for free. They do ask you to make a small donation eventually, but you can ignore it. But what I would say is if you are using a lot of their sound effects and perhaps you are recording some of your own sound effects then I would encourage you to upload your own sound effects to the website so that other people can benefit from you benefiting from the platform. So I've uploaded several sound effects to the site now as a thank you for all of the free sound effects that I have downloaded. So on this website it's really great if I just come up to this search bar and I search uh, swoosh for example then uh, and make sure that I've got some audio here and I'll search come on okay so you've got things like this can you hear that I think that's just someone waving like a bamboo cane around but that's an amazing swoosh transition sound you know uh, what about this Okay, so that's quite full on. Um, what else? Nice. Uh, so yeah, you can take your time. What? Go through as many as you want. Um, and as I say, I would just encourage you to either make a donation or to upload your own sound effects. Uh, but certainly this is an amazing, amazing website. I've used it for no end of different sound effects on different projects. So that is website number one. Uh, website number two, um, which I've used a lot, uh, is the Invato Marketplace. Now the Invato Marketplace is a, is a collection of websites which offer resources for different kind of uh, digital design projects. Um, the one specifically which I would suggest you check out for this kind of use case is uh, Video Hive. And this is Video Hive that we're on now. And uh, you can see that it says on the right. And this is a collection of design resources. But if we come up here to Apple Motion, um, you know Apple Motion is essentially like another bit of software that works really nicely with Final Cut Pro. It's kind of like Apple's answer to After Effects, but it really isn't as feature rich as After Effects in any way, shape or form. But you can use it for some cool stuff. So a lot of people make cool stuff in Motion and then they're uploading it here and you can buy it and they're relatively cheap. So if I come into here and look, if I go to Titles, this is where I've used it uh, quite a lot. We can have a look in these titles. Um, so I, this is the first one I've clicked on, completely random. Uh, let's just uh, let's just mute this again. So this is uh, the sort of demo for this particular one. Uh, let's see. So look, here you go. This pack um, is a few dollars, and you're getting all of these. And you can drag, you can get these, drag them, drop them into your timeline. You can edit the colours. You can edit the fonts that are used, the speed in which they come. And look, I mean, this is how many's in this pack? Fifty titles here for twenty-two dollars. That is a massive time saver and. There's just some really cool stuff in there as well. So I've got a few of these different packs and I did actually use one of them in my intro. Um, but yeah, I would thoroughly recommend that you check out Video Hive or just the entire Inveto marketplace. Um, you may know I am a designer um, when I'm not making videos on YouTube. Uh, so I've used this for print work in the past, um, for uh, other video projects. I've used it for web assets, for websites, um, marketing materials, for social media. There's so much on here. You can get like device mock-ups, flyer design, you know, loads and loads and loads of stuff. Uh, you can also get just like stock footage and stuff as well. But these titles, I found these to be pretty good. Uh, so have a browse and I'm sure you will find something in here 
let's look, let's look at this one. Yeah, you see there's so many different styles. You're bound to be able to find something that you like. I mean, look, they're, wow. They're pretty cool. I like that. Nice. A bit of Memphis style. Yeah, lovely. Lovely indeed. So, uh, yeah, really cheap, really useful, massive time saver. Um, so that's that. That's the second website. And then finally, uh, another website which I don't use too much but because it is a bit more expensive than the others. But I have used some of these effects in my intro, hence why I'm just showing it to you. And if you are looking uh, for something very specific, then you might not mind spending a little bit extra. Um, so I came here and it was actually, let's just search this site. So again, this is similar to the Inveto marketplace, but it's a little bit more specialist towards Final Cut. Um, let's do a little search for glitch. Glitch! And I think, I can, oh, there's loads now. I can't remember which one I actually bought. I've, I've got a feeling it was Pro Glitch, this one. So look, 29.95, this one, and Ooh, ooh, that's loud. There you go. So these are like effects that you can drag onto your timeline and do loads of cool stuff too. So a combination of free sound effects, cheap titles, and this glitch effect is essentially what I've used to make the difference between just some footage and a kind of nice dynamic intro. Ah, there's one other thing that I've forgotten actually, which is the transitions. Now, as you may or may not know, Final Cut has got lots of transitions that are sort of included uh, within it. I do feel like quite a lot of them have become a little cliched now and are feeling a little dated. Uh, so just to give you another resource, which I forgot to preload, uh, and that is Ryan Nangle. Now, if you're watching me on YouTube, I would thoroughly recommend that you check out Ryan's channel. Um, he does weekly Final Cut Pro tutorials. He is uh, very well established, a lot of subscribers, and he does some really cool stuff. And he's taken it one step further in that he also creates a lot of his own assets and sells them. So this is Ryan's page. He uses a website called Selfie, um, and he's got like transition bundles here um, for different types of transitions. Now I got this pack of transitions a while ago, I got them in a special deal, so I don't think I paid this much for them. But he has also got some free stuff on here as well, and he's quite often you know, doing deals and stuff, uh, discounts and stuff like that. So it's well worth uh, keeping an eye on his uh, YouTube channel and on his shop. Um, the only reason I mention it is because I did, again, I use some of these transitions. I find them a little more interesting and a bit more dynamic than the Final Cut basic uh, transitions. So that is that. Uh, right, okay, enough about that then. So we're coming back to the intro. And again, I am trying to keep this quick, failing so far, really, let's be honest. Um, so what we've done so far is lined up the footage. So now what we can do is we can use some transitions. Okay, so I'm going to do this really quickly. Uh, let's use some rolls. So if I put that one on there. And then we can maybe use some zooms. What's about what about a slide right zoom? We'll put that one on there. And again, I'm doing this really quickly just because otherwise you'll be here all day. Uh, what else? Wavy. What's in the wavy pack? Let's try that. So we do that. Beautiful. Okay, so uh, that is pretty much it, okay? Maybe I would use a few more um, different transitions. Oops, 
cancel that. There we go. Now what I did do when I was making my actual intros, I spent a little bit more time lining the clips up. So what you can actually do is you can make sure that the middle point of your transitions fall on your beat markers here. So you might say, okay, I'm just gonna move that a little bit there. So then it gives that and it just makes it a bit nicer. You can also adjust the length of your transitions just to make them a bit uh, quicker so that there you go so that they happen a bit more on time if that makes sense um, let's put something on that awkward cut as well there we go okay so I have gone a little bit overboard on the transitions but this is something that you can take your own time with when you're making an intro but already you can see it's kind of starting to come alive a little bit uh, then the next thing that we've done um, is I've done the duotone effect. Now I have already done a video on that so I'll link it up here somewhere and you can watch that. Um, but essentially uh, the way that I achieve that is by using an adjustment layer. Again I got this adjustment layer from Ryan Nangle, another example of the great resources that he offers. So I'm going to stick that above everything like so. On that adjustment layer I'm going to add a custom LUT and I'm going to just use this Noir which is a Peter McKinnon LUT. You've probably heard of Peter McKinnon if you haven't. Another channel well worth checking out. Um, it's just a nice contrasty black and white and then on top of that I'm going to put a solid. I'm going to put a custom solid I'm going to drag that over here, put it all the way over all of my footage and then I'm going to change the colour to something that I like. Um, I might just go wacky and use something different today, there we go like that. And then in the um, properties over on this right hand side I'm going to change the blend mode to multiply. So we've made the, the footage black and white and then we've added the adjustment layer. So now the whole intro is pink. It's pink. And we've got the transitions. So then, next up, what we're going to do, what I might actually do to try and just save your time, is see if I can just come into this intro. And take these sound effects. So these sound effects are all from uh, they're all from Freesound. Boom. Let's see how that works. So obviously my cuts are now in different places than on the original but you can put these swooshes and sounds in the right place for your clips. Alright, so hopefully you get the idea from that. Obviously I'm well aware that's pretty awful, but... So we've got a swoosh there that doesn't need to be there. Let's move him over there put him in the middle of that transition there you go okay so hopefully you can see now how this is coming together and then finally what I did is I used the glitch effects now these glitch effects, they're really simple to use. They're really just sort of drag and drop really. Let me just get rid of a few of these bits so we can see what's going on. Right, so these glitch effects, they're the sort of thing that you need to sort of use sparingly, but um, you can just really sort of drag them on if you want, go mad. See, that's just completely glitched the entire thing out. What I tend to do with them is just really shorten them down and just have 
like that, little short bursts. And again, I am literally randomly picking them now uh, for the sake of showing you something. Let's just drag this in here. Oh yeah, that looks good, doesn't it? Let's play that again. See? Uh, you've also got different types on this one, like noise. But I mean, yeah, I say this was this was quite expensive when I when I bought this. It was for a different project, and I was a bit like, oh, twenty nine dollars. But actually, I've used it a lot, and look how many different effects there are here. Um, there's quite a few different types of, you know, weird things going on, um, which is pretty cool. So yeah, I put a few of these over the top, and then I did the titles. So with the titles. Um, I used, let's go back to the other project now, because otherwise this video is just going to go on and on. Okay, so this was the finished timeline. You can see I've just taken a little more time getting my cuts onto the beat, getting the transitions to the length I wanted. You can see I've used the glitch effects at various times just to kind of bring a bit of interest to the frame. And then at the end, all I've done is used a single um, title, which was from one of the packs, okay? So I've not had to animate this myself or anything as difficult as that. I've just used one of the titles uh, there, which hopefully you can see that okay. And then I've brought my logo in, and all I've done is used a transition to slide the logo in. See that? You probably can't. Hold on. There we go. So yeah, I've used a transition at the bottom there, bring that in, and then the title above, which just animates in as well. And by the time you've done that, you sort of, hopefully, when you take your time a bit more than I am right now, you can end up with something like this. So this blue bit at the beginning, as I said, this is so you can overlay it. So there you have it. That is how I made my intro. I hope that was helpful. I hope I didn't go on too long. And I hope that I've given you enough info because, um, you know, it's difficult with something like this. I don't want to teach you to suck eggs as such, but I do want to make sure that you've got the tools now uh, to go away and make something of, you know, like an intro like that for yourself. So uh, yeah, I hope you found that useful. If you did, give the video a thumbs up and um, yeah, I'll see you next time. Peace.